Hi there, and welcome to the Love Sick Scribe podcast, where we talk about biblical truths, current topics, and where we grow in loving the Word and loving the one who is the Word, Jesus Christ. I am Dawn Hill, and I am the Love Sick Scribe. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are coming from. As you listen to this episode, I'm really thankful that you decided to join me on this final podcast of 2021. Can you believe it? I cannot believe at times that it's already at the end of this year, though there were times it seemed like it was time was standing still depending on what was taking place. I hope you had a Merry Christmas and I hope that you have a happy and blessed New Year as we go into this new year with anticipation and, and joy. Uh, some of us may be going into this new year with feelings of less than joy or maybe discontentment or discouragement or even grief for some people. And I hope that this podcast will encourage you as it encourages myself when I think about faith and life lessons I took away from 2021 that I'm going to share with you. And I'm hoping as you listen that it's causing you to look at your own life as well, that you're living for Christ and that you're taking some time to reflect on the areas where you're rejoicing and, and thanking God where he's helped you to grow, where he's sustained you, where he's um, lifted you up in the, in the midst of hardship, whatever that could be. And then the areas where you can see that there are weaknesses, you ask God to help you to grow in and, and to ever be conformed into the image of Christ by the Holy Spirit. That's our desire as believers is that we want to glorify Christ in, in all that we do in word and deed, we're, that we know those words and deeds don't save us. We know that we're created for good works by God so that we can glorify him in all that we do. And we know that our salvation is secure and, and sure in Christ alone. I was reflecting on personal growth this year and things that had taken place in my personal life and in my family, and I'm coming away with joy while being challenged in the midst of my weaknesses to press on and to set my eyes on Christ. And you may relate to some of these that I'm going to talk about. It's obviously not an exhaustive list by any means, otherwise we would be here forever and a day if it was an exhaustive list, but I encourage you to spend time taking some personal inventory and challenging yourself to grow and deepening your walk with the Lord. The one of the main things I rejoice in this year as I think about and reflect on faith and life lessons is a deepening love for the Word of God. That was something I, I really enjoyed reading the Word of God, but it wasn't until in 2020 and then really in this this year that I started having a deepening love for the word of God and shaking off the malaise or the lethargy so to speak shaking off the laziness of reading the Bible which unfortunately I was guilty of or I was guilty of taking scriptures uh, cherry picking and taking ones that uh, I really liked out of context or saying that they said something that they didn't say and misappropriating them. And you may have heard me talk before about biblical illiteracy. I was very much biblically illiterate when it came to understanding some things. And truth be told, I am still working on that. I think if we were if we were honest that we're all working on that there, even as I uh, read and study about different eschatologies, for example, I feel like sometimes my mind is spinning and I'm seeing the different areas, the pros and cons of all of them and trying to figure out where uh, I fit in. As I listen to those things that nobody has it figured out except for the fact that we know that Jesus is coming back and that we need to be ready for his return. But you may have heard me talk about biblical literacy and maybe you've heard the statistics or maybe you're, you're aware of the, the level of biblical literacy that's even in the United States, not necessarily the entire world, but in America. I'm passionate about biblical literacy or getting trying to get people out of that because of my own past, and I'm sure that you are the same way if you love the Word of God. This year, I happened to stumble across a statistic of this year with Bible reading that it has gone up, which is a good thing. It used to be the majority of Americans never read the Bible, but now it's dropped to 29%. But at the same time, there's only 11% of Americans that read the Bible every day. And as Christians, when we do not know what Scripture says, then we are spiritually anemic and easily led astray by different things that are taught, by different doctrines. We're, we're prone to believe things that are so people say that are in the Bible when they're not there at all. They're just catchy phrases or uh, colloquialisms that have been passed down. So this is something that 
we need to realize is a problem. And sometimes it's, it can be because we make excuses. I can definitely raise both my hands to make excuses for why I can't do certain things. I don't have time. I am tired. I don't feel like it. I've got this going on, that going on. But In the age and time that we live in, we really don't have excuses for not making time to spend in the Word of God. This is what is going to help us. The Word of God tells us that His Word is a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. And how can it be that in our lives if we don't read it? if we're not listening to it. You know, I know some people that don't like to read or that they don't want to take time to read. And my suggestion would be, well, you have a phone and there's audio on there now. There's, you can now listen to the Bible. There's times that I do that. If I'm, if I know that I'm pressed for time and I can't sit down and actually read the Bible, then I will pull out my app, my blue letter Bible, and I will find what what I'm reading on that day and I will listen to it and make sure that I understand it. And if I need to go back later that night before bedtime, then I'll read it again. If there's something that I missed or if there's something that caught my attention or I'll re-listen to it again. So if you have, um, an app on your phone, blue letter Bible is a good one that you can go to. You can listen to the Bible. That's one option for you. I'm finishing up a plan to read the Bible in a year. And that's the first time that I had done that. So at the end of this week, when, uh, when, 2021 wraps up, I'm going to have read the Bible in a year. Now, I don't say that to brag because obviously reading the Bible in a year doesn't mean anything as far as me knowing everything that's in the Word. But it's been a consistency that, that's been in my life to where I've been reading the Bible through in a year. Maybe you are coming into 2022 and you're thinking, I really want to read the Bible through in a year. I would encourage you to look at the different plans that you can find. There is the five-day Bible reading that you can find, fivedaybiblereading.com. That's the one I did this year. And you can go through the whole Bible in a year, or you can just do the New Testament in a year. Maybe that might be something for you to do to start with. Just know that it's it's feasible to do it, and it's important as a Christian that we spend time in the Word so that way we know the what the word says and we need to understand that this is an important aspect of growing in our fellowship with the lord you know sometimes especially with the background i came out of and probably some of you that are listening if you've come out of a background where emotions or the mystical side of of hearing the voice of god for yourself or having these encounters and experiences really having an emphasis on that or really not understanding what intimacy with Christ truly is, what fellowship with Christ is, and having a misconception of it because of not understanding the Bible, then you're going to think in your mind that reading the Bible is mundane. Now, it's not. I'm, I'm just telling you right now, it's not mundane. That the problem is not with the Bible. The problem is with us because the Bible is not mundane. That is part of my fellowship or growing in my intimacy with Christ. That relationship of wanting to to know what his word says and to love the word and love the one who is the word as I've said before so I encourage you read the Bible every day read it five days a week find a Bible plan that you can do that you don't feel overwhelmed and that you are going to commit to it and read every day and and have understanding maybe you don't like to read three chapters in a day or four chapters because you don't like to read. Again, audio Bibles are great things to do. Audio, the apps for the Bible apps are great. And you can find the different translations that you like. Find a good translation, a solid, reputable translation, whether it's word for word or thought for thought. You definitely want to find a good translation that you can either listen to or that you can read. I know for myself personally, I like to, I usually veer towards the ESV. I have an NASB. The second area of growth this year was in prayer. And my family had faced some trials this year at times. Uh, There were uh, the things I've talked about with my my husband's uh, diagnosis of MS that he faced at the end of 2020. And uh, actually he didn't get diagnosed until March of this year, but he had a lot of uh, health things that, that crept up and they seemed to come, come on pretty quickly and it escalated pretty fast to where um, it, it was it was difficult at times and it was emotionally um, difficult. I know for myself, though he seemed to handle it with a lot more grace than I did, but there were different things that popped up and, it, and it's between 
what he went through, my children went through things, I went through things, there were a different accidents that happened along the way and such, just things here and there that, that added up, and it seemed never ending. I don't know if anyone else, I'm sure that some, <laughs> there are many other people that can relate to that. It just seems like it, it's just, it, it continues on and on. You're going, when is this going to stop? When, <laughs> when is this going to stop? And the answer to that question is, when you go on to glory in heaven, that's when it stops. Um, but though I don't want to suffer, I don't know anybody who likes suffering, um, and I don't want to suffer. And though I don't want those I love to suffer, I'm, I found myself this year, uh, I know 2020 caused me to start praying in a different way and looking at biblical prayer through my pregnancy. But even into 2021, I really started understanding biblical prayer and I began to understand the important the importance of thanking God in the midst of suffering and not focusing on the suffering itself, but focusing on Christ and the examples in scripture of people doing that time and time again. I, I found myself thanking God through trials and suffering, and I came to a greater understanding of biblical prayer and leaning on the Lord. Uh, one of the accounts that really stood out to me as I would read through scripture about suffering and difficulty and trusting the Lord and leaning on the Lord was when Paul was giving his account in 2 Corinthians 12, and he's talking about how he had had a great revelation from the Lord. He was actually one of the people that had been taken up into heaven, and he had seen things that he was not even allowed to utter, is what 2 Corinthians 12 tells us. And then he goes on to talk about how because of the great revelation he was shown, a thorn in the flesh was given to him, a messenger of Satan. And some people debate on what that is, but regardless, it, it does, when I read it, it seems like it is a physical illness, a physical ailment. When I look and I put pieces of the puzzle together, comments in Galatians and different things, it seems like it's a physical ailment. Nevertheless, you notice that when Paul is talking about this thorn in the flesh, that he said three times, I pled with the Lord or asked the Lord to take this away. And we see that the response from Christ was, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And then after this is recorded that Christ says this to him, Paul goes on to say, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And that was him resting in the strength of God, trusting in the Lord to strengthen him, not relying on his own strength, not boasting in his own power because he realized he had no power because the Lord, he asked the Lord. You didn't see Paul again. This was another thing I learned this year during prayer. It was not something of commanding and demanding and decreeing and declaring and rebuking Satan and, and such Whoever's listening to this may disagree with that, but I encourage you to go to scripture and try to find examples of that where we're told to pray that way because we're not. But looking at this and then and looking at my own life, and I'm not comparing myself to Paul by any means, but I think we can glean from and be encouraged by fellow believers like Paul when he's he's acknowledging his weakness but his dependency on God, his strength in God, of him pleading with the Lord, please take this away. And the response of Christ was, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And when we read scripture, when we read this, we can be sure that this is God speaking, and we can read this and be encouraged that when we are suffering, when we're going through physical disease or we're going through hardships in marriage or with our children or or finances jobs when uh, or um, in life in general um, when we're going through hardships and and most certainly when we're when we are being faithful to the gospel to the to Christ we're being faithful to Christ and, and for, through persecution and suffering which to be perfectly honest with you I don't think any of us in the western um, very few of us understand in the western culture what it really means to suffer to be persecuted for the sake of Christ, to, to have our lives threatened for this. We do, we do not understand true persecution. But still, there is levels of suffering that we all endure because we live in a fallen world. And the point is, is that as Christians, we are to rest and to trust in the Lord and to lean on Him and to realize that there's 
opportunities in the midst of those weak, those times of weakness and the, in the t- times of suffering to glorify him and to understand that he strengthens us, that we need him. We need him every hour of every day. We need him and we are to turn to him and to lean on him. And that's something that I've come away with this year, understanding the graciousness of God and that he perfects us in weakness. He's there in our darkest and most trying moments. He's not caught off guard by what's going on. I know that that we are because we don't know everything, but God knows everything. And he's not caught off guard. He, he knows all things. And he's faithful. He's faithful as we cast our cares on him. He's not sitting up in heaven thinking, I can't believe that this is going on. He knows he is aware of everything before it even happens. He's aware. He's sovereign. And we can rest in that. Even if we're anxious or have, we're we're struggling in those moments. And if you're dealing with hardships and illness or heartbreak, I want to encourage you today, if you're listening to this, cast all your cares on him. The word tells us, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. If you're a believer in Christ, you know Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you realize that he saved you from the wrath of God, that he's cleansed you and that he's given you his righteousness for your sin and that he is your Lord and Savior and that you have the promise of eternal life through him alone, then you can be rest assured that if even if you're going through hardships, illness, heartbreak, whatever it is you're going through, you can cast your cares on him because he cares for you. Does that mean that it's all going to go away in, in, the, in the snap of, of fingers? No, that does not, that's not what that means. It means that he is going to help you and to give you his peace, his joy, that sometimes you, you may get what you're asking for in prayer. You may get um, the reprieve of whatever's going on, and you may not. And in those moments that you ask God, God, help me to endure, help me to persevere, help me to endure this, God, help me to grow in whatever this is that I am being ever conformed to your image, Lord Jesus. Help me to be led by your spirit. Help me to glorify you in all this and to lean and trust on you. And let me tell you something else that I've learned in in all this and in trusting him through the storms of life. Do not be afraid to be weak before others and before God. It can be such a trap that we fall into that if we have a strong personality of, uh, or we don't want to be weak, and I've had to deal with that myself, is that weakness, um, you know, I would have in my mind, weakness means a lack of faith, or weakness means that I don't trust God, or weakness is, uh, is, is, is an undesirable thing to demonstrate. And if anything, I've learned the beauty of weakness this year before the Lord. And when it's time for me to um, go to other believers and say, I need prayer or I need help. And really, when we do that, that's not a lack of faith. That's us going and really demonstrating that we understand the strength of God. We understand the strength of, of prayer unto the Lord, the strength that is necessary to be around other fellow believers that are also trusting in the Lord and to not do this on our own. So weakness is is not something to shy away from. If you're doing that, I would encourage you, as I have to encourage myself, don't veer away from weakness and don't think that because you don't demand and command things that you're weak. You're not weak. We are to trust in the Lord. We are to lean on him. We are to petition. We are to ask. We are to um, go to him in prayer and and trust him. Trust him that, you know, what we're asking for, that according to his will, he'll do it. That's what the Bible says. And in John, in First John, I believe, when it talks about anything that we ask according to his will, he will do it. We have to be okay with God's will. So don't be afraid to be weak. And maybe you haven't done a study on what biblical prayer looks like and understanding the difference between decreeing and declaring and petitioning God, asking God, supplicating. Philippians 4, 4 through 6 is a great passage. It's one that I have turned to many, many times when I've had anxious thoughts and I've had to ask God, God, call my anxious thoughts. Your word says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's what Paul tells the Philippian church in Philippians 4, 4 through 6. And I love the part of there where you're, where you're reading through that and you're seeing it says, make your petitions known, supplicate before God, bring thanksgiving along with it. Thank God in the midst of all that, of, of pain. Thank God in the midst of suffering. Thank God in the midst of hardship and difficulty. There's always a reason to thank God. And then when you've done that, it doesn't say that you'll get what you want. It says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. That his peace guards your heart and mind that no matter what happens, he's God and that you've trusted him and he's good and he's faithful and he's worthy of praise and glory. So some things to think about with that. Biblical prayer was a big one for me this year and I'm thankful for that along with the word and those are very important as believers in Christ. A couple more I'll cover. Uh, The third one was learning and continuing to learn how to be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to anger. Boy, I am, I don't know if I'll ever get this one down because I have a tendency in my own, uh, myself. And if my husband is listening to this, he'll agree with it. Uh, I tend to think, I tend to say what I think. I tend to say what's on my mind and what I'm thinking. And sometimes that comes out really well and eloquent and sometimes it doesn't. (laughs) And there are many of us that have that problem in, uh, It can be a strength, but it can also be a weakness, especially if you hurt people with with what you say because you're not watching your words or you're not being like James says, being quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. This year has really helped me too, and I'm by no means arrived. There's plenty of, of work, uh, progress, there's plenty of progress that needs to be made in that area for me personally. But one thing that's really helped me, I know that God has used is addressing some of the topics that I talk about. And when people disagree with me, whether they disagree respectfully, or they're not so nice when they disagree. One of the things I've come away from that is learning how to, to respond to people, to remember first and foremost that I am representing the Lord Jesus Christ when I respond and I'm testifying if I'm testifying of him as a Christian then my actions need to testify of him as well and the times that I fall short of that and I sin and fall short because of you know having those moments of um, frustration or anger or not having my words seasoned with salt like I should then I'm I want to be quick to repent of that whether it's to my children or to my husband or to someone that I'm talking with and conversing with on, on social media or someone that on the phone that's, that's wanting to discuss some of these things. And that's happened before. But I want to glorify God in that. And I have to keep that, not glorify Dawn. That, now that's the thing that I have to remember is that I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to be prideful. I don't want to be arrogant. But I want to glorify the Lord when, when there are times that I have to be more direct then I want to still demonstrate the love of God through that while not compromising the truth in the process. We live in a culture where everyone has an opinion, and most of us are keyboard warriors at one time or another. I know I have been, and I'm sure you have been as well. (laughs) So all of us have been that way. It's much easier for us to be brave when we're not standing face to face with somebody. And one of the, one of the things I think of is if I'm going to say something on social media, am I willing to say what I'm saying in that tone to that person's face as I am by, um, behind my keyboard or behind my phone? I, again, I want to represent Christ. I know you want to represent Christ. We want to glorify Christ in word and deed. When we're opinionated, or that we hold strong convictions about things, it can be easy to become ensnared in that pride and wanting to be right. And another thing I've had to learn too this year is it's okay to eat some crow sometimes. That's an old saying about eat crow, but sometimes it's okay to be wrong and to, we need to be gracious enough to admit, oh, well, I really don't know as much as I should. And then to address that. And then when there are times that are people that are attacking you and they're saying, well, they just don't know. You just don't know anything. You, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, another thing I've learned is um, not only how to talk with people 
that disagree and still learning how to do that, talking with people and converse with them with who disagree and who I disagree with. But I am also understanding more about listening and responding rather than reacting. That's one thing. Um, we can react or we can respond. There is a difference. And also I'm learning that there are times when it's just not going to be fruitful to respond. And so I don't respond to every message or every comment or every email because if, if it get, gets to where it's going to be argumentative, sometimes it's best not to say anything because I know that the best, that the best things, the, the things that are going to glorify God or um, edify that person, they're not going to come out well. And it's, it's not going to be fruitful, especially if it's, if it's coming down to like a tit for tat type thing, or if it's coming down to trying to be a right fighter in the, in the sense of not getting anywhere. (laughs) It's a process. It's a, it's learning about how to talk with people and to converse while at the same time wanting to glorify the Lord and, and edify the body, edify the church when we're, when we're talking, edify other believers and point, point back to Christ always having Jesus Christ at the, at the forefront of all that we do, that we're wanting to, to glorify him in, in everything. And also too, uh, one of the bigger things that I've learned is not avoiding confrontation. As much as I like to, to state my convictions on things or my beliefs or just my opinions, I mean, just because I have a belief about something the color of green, Kelly green.